news. Stop the music. <laughs> it's time for news. <laughs> Let's head on into the drone newsosphere with our beloved newsman, Jeff Sills. What's going on, buddy? Well, not as much news this week, but we definitely have... A good, I guess some really good stories to share with uh-huh. you guys. So a l- little bit less quantity, but lots of good quality. Okay, good. That's um, what we need. So the first one out the bat is DJI's Mini 3 Pro yet again stumbles toward its eventual release. Mm. And in this case, they accidentally listed it for sale again. Whoopsie. Um <laughs> And in this time, when they listed it for sale, it listed it with all these nice, wonderful photographs, mm. as well as drone specs and everything else that we need to know about this drone. So there's very little left <laughs> to guess. As to did what did is anyone going to be in the t- buy one of these? Were they able to buy one before they found out what I they did? Ha- yeah, I don't have any indication through the information that I had on the leak that anybody was actually able to make a purchase. Um, but the I guess the big thing was is that all of the leaked images, uh, we probably don't need those anymore because there it is, right there. That's the drone. It's right. very simple. You can see it. And so the, some so. of the specs here, um, maximum speed, 16 meters per second, maximum flying height. Now, that's new. 4,000 meters? What is oh, that? Yeah, in, what yeah. is that in real measurement? Hold on. I, I apologize, everyone else, but uh, the United States. Um, Alexa... How many feet is 4,000 meters? 4,000 meters is about 13,100 feet. <laughs> That's, no, there's going to be trouble. There's going to be trouble. Are you kidding me? That's insane. Why? I, I, I don't know why, but um, let's go on here. 64 60. minutes charging time yeah. for 34 minutes of flying time. Now, you're trading a lot of extra weight and sensors for the minutes, but... Um, uh, da, 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 da. Wait, whoa, whoa! What's this? Wi-Fi enabled? It's not Wi-Fi, is it? It ha- apparently is Wi-Fi enabled. So you can you can use your drone as a hotspot. I'm you're not controlling it with Wi-Fi, right? Mm, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> okay. I, no, so, but I think I think it has the option to control it with your phone directly via Wi-Fi if you don't want to use the remote because it has the O3 OcuSync three transmission. Okay, system good control. and. And Jake ah. knows that because DJI has sent him one already. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to someone recently who was sent one. Actually, I did too. Did you? And I don't wish that they sent me one because it no. feels like it's been interesting. A testing. nightmare. A <laughs> yeah, nightmare. Exactly. Uh, in what way was it a nightmare? Uh, Jake, can you share without sharing the person's name? Uh. From what I understood, it was mostly like almost none of the features worked. Like it would fly, and that was about it. Oh no! Oh like, no! I mean, that was that was a while ago. So I, you know, I'm oh, sure okay. it's better now. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it's better now. But yeah, um, they don't get any of the updates. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, uh, I'm gonna have to. Let me know in the chat. Are you gonna get one? I mean, I'm gonna have to get one, I guess. <clears throat> I'm. I'm gonna get one. Well, the expectation date right now is that it will launch on May 10th. May tenth, yeah. until so until you they have five days. Yeah, until they push that back. Now, did did everyone get the email yeah. from DJI that says we got something cool coming up? Did you see that? Did you see this? A twist in the plot. What could it be? <laughs> Vertical did... video. Vertical video. No, Ken. no. Uh, yeah. It so does this it, and it shoots vertically. <laughs> wait, what? No, no. Yeah. What? What does? What is this? That's what it does. It, it, sh- it rotates the gimbal 90 degrees and it'll shoot vertically. Seriously? Yes. Uh, which, is they make this? Are you so excited about vertical video, Ken? It's Ser- the wave of the future. Are you Are you messing with me? Are you trying oh, to trigger 100%, me? percent I hate vertical video. Oh, I do too. I think because our eyes go this way, not that uh-huh. way. Yeah. I, I've said it how many no, times? It, it does. It will shoot vertical video. They they redesigned the gimbal so that it'll rotate 90 degrees and well, then what, shoot vertical video. What will? A camera? A drone? What is this thing? The the uh, Mini 3. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Oh, well, then That's I'm definitely not getting one. I'm definitely not getting one. <laughs> just, just on principle. Or no, I'll get one and I'll light it on fire. 
No, I can't. No, I don't want to do that. Can't get my nah, money. Do that. Can, can you get DJI Refresh if you light it on fire yourself? All right. Probably not. All right. Seriously, you tell you're them not. You lit it on fire. You're yourself? not. Are you're not kidding me? It really does vertical video. Yes. <laughs> there was another drone that does that. Uh, was it one of the Autels or something where it had the camera that would the French, the French drone? Oh, would, parrot. The parrot. parrot yeah. The, uh, yeah. 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 And the well, and remember the the original Mavic two, the original Mavic Pro had a. It wouldn't do video, but it would flip the the gimbal horizontal for photos, so you could yes. take a long, a tall photo. Yeah, I do remember that one. So he'll be back. Why? <laughs> it's what all the kids are doing these days, Ken. That vertical video. <laughs> okay. Well, I can't wait for my review. Okay. <laughs> okay, Jeff. <laughs> all right. Next in the news, France uh, is uh, set for ha hosting the Olympics next, as well as uh, the Rugby World Cup. So they got two heavy hitting events coming up. And so recently, they've ordered an anti drone system. So the French Defense Ministry uh, has purchased, uh, I guess they, they went through a bunch of different companies, um, and they got the CS Group contracted for an anti-drone platform, uh, which is designed to detect, identify, and neutralize small non-military aircraft for a whopping $377 million. Whoa! Uh, what does it use? And, does, it, does it use Does it use lasers? Because if it I, does, if you pay I, almost half a million dollars for something like this, you're gonna want to have lasers on it. Lasers. The big, the biggest thing for the French apparently was that it needed to be modular and easily transportable. So, um, it it's something that can easily move around and be redirected into different areas. Um, so I'm, I'm not getting scale on that. What is? How big is it? Do we? Is that actual? Like the drone? Is that? Far away from yeah, it, that or, would probably be to scale for for the device. It's it's not it's not a small system, but uh, it's it's big. If it um, doesn't have visible Star Wars red and blue lasers <laughs> flying out of it, then it's not worth it. That's because right. even if I was the interloping drone and I got shot down, I would want to get shot down by an actual beam of Star Wars laser light. <laughs> Then it would be worth it. <laughs> yep. Then at least you have a cool story to tell. Right. Hey guys, that was sorry about that. My bad with that. Um, you shot me down. Fair is fair. Uh, can I get the SD card? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need the footage. <laughs> I gotta yeah. have it. <laughs> All right. So next we have. Uh, they recently had an AUVSI Excellence Award, and a drone called the Life Seeker Mini Search and Rescue Drone won the award this year. Hmm. Um, this is from a company called Centum Research and Technology, and this particular drone is designed for search and rescue. Um, it has an immense amount of, uh, like, guess, locating devices on it. You know, for different types of cameras, um, it it can locate people via their cell phones. Even without network coverage, hmm. um, it can it can be used by SAR teams to find missing persons based on their you know for their exact location, um, and it, this one is an interesting drone. I look forward to seeing this one used in some life saving events. Oh, absolutely! That we'll get a chance to document. That's great uh, news. Uh, hold on, what's up? I'm being told by my producer that doesn't exist that yes, it does have laser. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so next we have some really interesting footage. We've talked in the past about the Mars helicopter, the, the drone that they took with them, and we haven't had a lot of feedback as to how NASA's been using this. Recently, there was some footage. The, the Mars helicopter flew over wreckage of its own spacecraft. In other words, you know, when, when they come into the atmosphere... They're, they're dropped from a platform, and that platform's attached to the parachute, and that platform floats off. Well, in this particular case, uh, the helicopter gave us footage of the platform. Th what this, is fan afterwards? this is fantastic, and uh, I want to thank uh, the channel um, Mars Guy. Yes. I think for this. Uh, so, yeah, check this out. This is amazing. In the history of Mars exploration, there's never been the opportunity to get this kind of bird's eye view of spacecraft hardware. 
Here's Mars guy for scale. Mm -hmm. Ingenuity flew at eight meters or about 26 feet in altitude. The objective was to provide images that might be useful to engineers planning the Mars sample return mission. But for the rest of us, these images clearly show one of the realities of landing on Mars. A parachute alone, even the biggest one ever used, can't safely land a spacecraft. This back shell impacted at about 78 miles per hour or 126 kph. That's because the atmosphere of Mars is so thin, less than 1% the density of Earth's atmosphere. Even so, every landed mission to Mars has used a parachute to help slow things down before the final descent stage takes over. A jetpack in the case of Perseverance, but also airbags in the case of three previous missions. Although these artifacts of the Perseverance mission may never be displayed in the Smithsonian Museum, they likely will become revered monuments of the quest to explore Mars. How amazingly awesome is that? This is the kind of stuff that reminds me we're living in the future. It's so incredible. And, and that shell thing, yeah. the debris, it looks like something out of Lost in Space. You know? Yeah. It's It boggles the mind. We flew to Mars, parachuted in, and then later on flew a, a little drone around to to see our our junkyard that we're forming up there. <laughs> yeah. What's a, what's amazing is the in the in the in that particular video if you if you ever get a chance to look up the whole video he's got some a lot of information he shows the actual flight path where they programmed the drone to fly and he gave to scale the distances that the thing was flying that drone is not flying short flights that thing was flying you know flights that were almost a football field in length or even longer right I mean that's that's some impressive work to have that drone out there still almost what uh, a, a, almost a year later still right. out there but, flying around doing but, that stuff but now you know the more flights we have the more wreckage up there that we do um, future flights are going to have to avoid it because it, it's critical infrastructure <laughs> <laughs> also did they get their uh, beyond visual line of sight waiver Cause... I think they did I think they're covered on that yeah, 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 yeah. Who, yeah. NASA, what NASA. regulatory body manages the airspace on Mars? NASA does what they want. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, you have to remember also that from instruction to carry out the instruction, something like eight minutes, just, yeah. you know, it's like, tch, 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 make a left. And then eight minutes later, it makes a left. So it's incredible, the stuff that is happening. It's, it's, uh, that blows my mind. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right, so next we have uh, a German-based company called Nocturne Drones. They specialize in putting together large, dazzling drone light shows for customers such as Eon, Xbox. Uh, they did the State of Saxony and Halt on the day of the German unity. Um, and they recently got a, broke a Guinness World Record for the most consecutive formations of drones. Um, the company is also investing heavily into anti-drone technology to... Uh, protect the 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 systems that when they put on these displays, they don't want someone else flying their drone into what they're doing. Right. Um, and so they they have a, a DE drone cloud-based system that can detect detect and identify and locate 300 different types of drones, even homemade drones. Um, it works with clients in 35 different countries uh, to be able to help stop. Uh, to detect and stop these drones from entering into where they're putting on these these performances. Um, if you look on this, it looks like they're using some sort of LIDAR, maybe, on there, right, Jeff, maybe? Possibly, yes. Which would be... <laughs> laser. <laughs> when it... You, you, you got a new laser button, didn't you? That's, that's the reason why... <laughs> yeah. I just like lasers. All right. No, that's cool, because when you're flying a couple hundred drones you don't want one drone messing up the show oh yeah there's gonna be that one show you know there's gonna be there's that gonna one be show a thousand that, drones 
Yeah. Pulling off the most spectacular display you've ever seen, and then some guy with his little FPV drone is going to come ripping through there right. and destroy the whole thing. <laughs> right, right, or right. Or a 14-year-old with their Mavic, Mavic <laughs> Mini, you know. Yeah. Right. Mm. I want to get close and check well, it out. There are many three that shoot <coughs> vertical video. Oh, you know, we're, <laughs> we're laughing, but that will happen. Yeah, will. Right? All the things that we thought wouldn't happen, flying into airports, landing on the White House lawn, uh, go, yeah, flying it over s stadiums, yeah, yeah, uh, all that stuff's happening. Yep. All right. So, uh, also, what's happening is the police in Lamp is Port Lambton, Ontario, recently recovered a drone that had flown from the United States into Canadian territory. Um, this particular drone crashed into the side of a tree, oh. as drones tend to do. Yeah. So when the police went out and found this drone and recovered it, and this was not a small drone by any means, this is a large commercial drone, um, they realized that the drone wasn't actually performing, say, film, you know, work or wasn't a, a, a I guess, a commercial activity. It had a bucket truck on the bottom of it with a plastic shopping bag uh, that was attached with metal carabiners and electrical tape with 11 handguns. Most of oh. which were prohibited in Canada. <laughs> well, now hold on a second. Uh, it was and the serial numbers of all of these handguns miraculously had been sanded off in the crash. So these handguns were going to Canada, to Canada. But Canadians are so nice; they're not going to shoot anybody. And if they did, they would say, "Oh, we're sorry about that. Sorry, didn't well, mean to shoot you." The police suspect that the drone took off in Michigan and flew across the St. Clair River, which marks the border between Canada and the United States. And then somehow, while well, whoever was piloting the drone, they crashed into the side of a tree mm. as part of their flight. So somewhere in Canada is somebody <clears throat> who's still waiting for 11 slightly sanded handguns. Okay, well, now, there's no question uh, where they got, I mean, you know, we got plenty of guns to ship, right, as a country. But um, listen, I guess the, the takeaway from this is if you're going to illegally smuggle guns via drone into another country, make sure you have obstacle avoidance on. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, Did you hit a tree? I knows <laughs> I needed you that. don't ever hit trees. Trees just come out of nowhere and grab your drone. That's, that's right. That's they jump up. Every time. Yep, they jump up and they grab your drone. Trees it's will do a that. well-known phenomenon. Yeah, because trees are dicks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so next in the news, the there was we talked about this uh, I think about a year ago where they were talking about propulsion drones that didn't use uh, blades. They used an electrostatic technology. Mm. Um, and so there's a company called Undefined Technologies that unveiled the next generation silent commercial drone that uses ionic propulsion instead of propellers. Um, this particular drone has literally no moving parts. It, it basically uses accelerated ion, ion, ionized air mm -hmm. and thrusts it downwards and then allows it to fly. Now, obviously, it, it's still something that's under development. Uh, they have a $22 or a $2 million seed funding that they've been able to do two successful flights uh, with this system. And, I mean, it's, it's not a small drone. It's a big drone. Um, but the, the one problem that they have is that the ionic air or the, the ionized air that they need to create you can't do at altitude oh the higher it gets the thinner the air gets and then the less thrust that you get so it's not a drone that is going to fly at excessively high altitudes um but it is relatively quiet the new prototype uh flew for about two and a half minutes and measured 85 decibels oh okay and and uh yeah. can, can it 85 yeah. 85 decibels. I, the target so about, that they're shooting for is 70 decibels, about the same as okay. a DJI Mavic. Okay. Um, and this, like I said, this is not a small drone. This thing is a monster. So having a huge drone that large with the same decibel level as, say, a DJI Mavic, that's not that's not that's not too shabby. That's impressive. Yeah, I actually have the audio from from that. Uh, I'll just put this back up here. I have that. Uh... Yeah, that's yep, it. It's yep. going by. Now, the important thing is, can it carry guns? <laughs> no, no. The important thing is, can it not hit things while carrying guns? True. 
Good point, sir. Good point. Yes. Points. Yes. Uh huh. And, yeah. <laughs> and and the other the other deep and you know probing question that is existentially needs to be asked is, can it carry tube socks? Yeah. And and you know had they have they toddler tested it? <clears throat> because if it can't <laughs> lift, you know, three yeah, toddlers. I, I if it's that big and it can't lift at least three toddlers, you know, stack but, like cordwood, uh, then it's no good. But if but if it's quiet enough to lift a sleeping toddler, oh, know, without well, waking it up, yeah, yeah there you oh. go. That could, that could be useful. All okay. right. So last in the news, and this is the one that uh, I'm surprised if any of you in the world have this, seen this. This is not last in the news, Jeff. We did this in <laughs> rehearsal, but uh, I have okay. I have a news story, and uh, it's oh, a yeah, silly. You do have a news story. It's a silly news story, but um, and I don't know where this is. Somebody sent this to me, and I just thought I'd share this in the news because um, if this happened to you, it would certainly be news. And this is a short little clip. I'll play it a couple times. This means that someone was flying where they shouldn't. Oh, so yeah. this is just from a concert. I don't know where it is, but this poor girl got a drone stuck in her hair. Somebody was flying it at a concert and <laughs> it got out of control. And of course it got stuck in her hair. So who is flying an FPV quad at a concert? Maybe, was it the concert well, pr promoters, maybe? Who is, who is flying an open prop FPV quad at a concert? Right, right. Yes, that's another thing. <laughs> like a, an open yeah, prop 5-inch at a concert. Yeah, uh, the same knuckleheads that would fly guns into Canada, I imagine. But... Probably. So well, uh, clearly they can't not hit things. So right, um, you know. But even even a drone that has the props guarded on it can get stuck in your hair, as I will now prove from one of my videos from a, a couple years ago. Uh, just oh, enjoy this. Yes, <laughs> this is the H eight two three H from Snaptain, and it's so easy that even someone with no experience can fly it. Person with no experience. This is Brandy. She's going to fly this for the first time with no practice, aren't you? Yes. Ah, magic. That is the uh, little snap chain. Now, this isn't an FPV drone. It's just a little non-GPS toy, but it's a great little beginner drone. You're a beginner, right? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's a pro. <laughs> She's got this. She's got this. Yeah. You got it. Hey, how... Oh. Well, oh, oh. <laughs> if you would like to win this really fun drone, all you have to do is uh, put this word in the comments, that exact word, and I will choose from those who commented. <laughs> you get this out of my hair now. It's stuck in her hair. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. <laughs> Bo and bye. What's wrong, Brandy? It's my hair. You got a drone stuck in your hair, do you? <laughs> I, oh, you are in there. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to cut. <laughs> oh, you can't my hair. I have to. It's all knotted. Look at that. Zippity dip, dippity dip. You're free. Look what you did. <laughs> 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 I think I just peed a little. <laughs> oh man, that was so funny. That was so funny. Poor. Yeah, so poor you kid. got to win that that drone and get a little DNA at the same time. Sure. <sighs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jeff. All right, so the last one is uh obviously the best one. Uh Reed Trimmer is the gentleman that deserves the credit for this because he caught oh. by far the most incredible drone footage of a tornado. I have ever seen. Oh yeah, ever. Yeah, this and this is zoomed in a little bit. Uh, in a moment, you'll see how far back he was. But you might think, well, you can't fly a drone in a tornado. But yeah, because the the air is uh, kind of isolated up there, doing its windy stuff to those poor people's homes. So yeah, well, and and he actually, if I'm not mistaken, they had to they they the drone got pushed away by the wind, and they had to go and recover it. Right. Um, eventually so they had they had some photographs i think i saw on his uh, facebook site where they had gone and, and had to recover the drone 
uh, on the corner of a street someplace. Yeah, Reed, Reed Timmer's got some great uh, storm chasing videos. He's been doing this yes. for years. He's got amazing video. Um, so do check out his channel. But yeah, um, and these- he he even went and color corrected the the video. The first one was like really really dark, and he came back and color corrected it so that it uh, it gave you more of a of an idea as to what was actually happening. But uh, in this shot, you'll see how far back he is. I think if it'll pull back because that is uh, zoomed in a little bit. God, and so you can see how a tornado will just destroy a house, and then right across the yeah. street, it's fine. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But see, this is how far away it was. So you can find wow. some stable air. I mean, don't try it. Don't do it because you don't want to get yeah. close to. Uh, do you know any storm chasers, Jake? I don't. Oh no, actually, I did. I I was up in a glacier ice cave photographing the aurora, and this guy walks in. Uh, you know, because it's like I'm two miles from the road, and this guy walks up at two in the morning because that's when the aurora's out. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Colorado, we were like, "Oh, hi, what are you doing?" Uh, you know, not many people walk out to a glacier ice cave in the middle of the night. Um, and he was from Colorado, and he actually does storm chasing during the summer down there. So it's like, wow, that explains why you're hiking to a glacier ice cave in the middle of the night in the dead of winter. <laughs> right, because uh, your yes, your adrenaline ran out, and you need to risk <laughs> yeah. your life again until yeah. tornado season. But uh, that, that's crazy. I got invited to storm chase a few times from some people, and just never did make it out there. Yeah. You know, I was like, hey, send me the video. If you got, hey, if you guys live, send me the video. All right. Yeah. Thanks. But uh, anyway, Jeff, how are you feeling, buddy? You feeling okay? <coughs> Well, I uh, I am I guess on the mend, so to speak. Um, we had a couple of weeks back uh, one of those I guess twenty four hour flu bugs go through the house, and it started with the kids and then moved on through the adults. Um, and unfortunately, everybody else was able to recover from it except for me, uh, and I was having a lot of difficulty breathing, uh, a lot of difficulty uh, getting uh, enough oxygen. And so they put me on some medications uh, for the first week to see if it would improve things. And it, it really didn't. It, it didn't help at all. And so they changed the medication. Um, and as Ken has mentioned, I, I tend to worry about everybody else before I worry about myself. And I, I don't go to the doctor an awful lot. So when, uh, when I ha- did have to go to the doctor, I'd, I'd never heard of copay before. That was uh, something new. Mm. <coughs> And so, needless to say, all of a sudden, things got real expensive real fast. Um, and uh, so, they gave me new prescriptions, and I go over to the the pharmacy and turn them in. And they said, oh, no problem. They'll be ready in 45 minutes, you know. So, we go and kind of dilly-dally around, get a, something to drink, and just sit and chat for a bit and go back over there and pull up to the thing. And I'm like, all right. So, you know, because I've been to the pharmacy before. My prescription's normally 40 bucks. You right, know, no right. Deal. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I tell, okay, no problem. Yeah, I pull my card out, and I'm like, all right, 40 bucks. Like, okay, so what do I owe you? And he's like, $479. Oh. <coughs> yeah, so um, <laughs> that's that's and, a shock. But let me tell you, uh, Jeff, there's a lot of people here that have been helping you with the with the Super Chats tonight. And uh, I'm going to get some of this and, to you, okay? And I do appreciate it. I really do, because uh, I was not prepared for one Single medication to cost four hundred and sixty something dollars. That was uh, insane. Yeah. Uh, so, needless to say, hopefully, I don't have to use that a lot. <coughs> but as you can tell, obviously, I I will get winded, and uh, and start having issues with breathing. So I take this stuff fairly often now uh, to help uh, alleviate this, and hopefully, uh, we'll see it uh, fade out. So. Okay, good. Well, we're all uh, sending you positive vibes, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my producer that doesn't exist send you a big old bucket of Raz just for yourself. I'm going to have it shipped to your oh, house. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yes. We well, don't I'm, usually I'm, like I'm, to pull out the Raz from the Raz chamber, but we'll do it for no. you because we love you so much, Jeff. No, I, 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 have, I have a spot right there that I can put the bucket and I'm fine. I think if you, if, you, if you mix a little in with whatever you drink at night, that'll help. And then if you put a little in a vapor, vaporizer, nebulizer thing, yep, that'll help. And then if you put a little on yourself right before you go to bed, just under your nose, 
That's right. And then if you get grandma to put a little Vicks Vapo rub on your chest. Oh, sure. It's a little creepy because no, there's I'm, your I'm, naked I'm, chest I'm, with grandma and everything. But it's the love. I'm, it's the love. No, no, Jeff. I'm, I'm good. I've, I've checked the government warning because the government is very beneficial. Mm -hmm. And according to the Surgeon General, uh, I should not drink this alcoholic beverage during pregnancy because of the risk of birth, attack, birth defects. Consumption of alcoholic beverages impairs your ability to drive a car or operate machinery that may cause health problems. So it doesn't say anything on here about RAS. Oh, so, oh uh, good. You can yeah, mix it with RAS. We're, we're good. Fantastic. All right, Jeff, thank you for the news. We love you. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out. We should probably mention RemotePilot101.com. Isn't it a great place? Great place. It is a great place. Tell us about your place, Jason. So Remote Pilot 101, no one has uh, prepared more Part 107 pilots than us. And you'll be pleased, uh, those of you who are current customers now, uh, you're going to be experiencing version 3 uh, and a brand new learning management system in about two weeks. So the best just keeps on getting better. RemotePilot101.com. Use co promo code HERON18. Which, by the way, Ken. Yeah. I can't brag on you enough. When we search promo codes, you, you know me, I'm, I'm all about our marketing and everything else. Heron18 is the most used promo code. Your people listen to you, Ken. Yay, thank Seriously. you, people. I appreciate that. And you, cool. you've been very busy updating the lessons, too, because there's... Uh, there's not a... Every video has gotten a facelift. There's 76 videos in there. Every single one has gotten a facelift. The course has gone from... Um, nine hours, to almost 12 hours now. There's just so much new content. We're always trying to um, innovate, push new content. Now with all um, the recurrent tests changing so much, we're, we're like, wow, we just launched our new course. We need to fix it now. So we're we're back to that. I was just reviewing some of the stuff our writers sent over earlier for some of the content. And there's some more great stuff coming out here soon as well. And uh, you take actual questions that uh, test takers give you. Uh, and kind of incorporate those in the in the quizzes too, right? So they're actual yep, FAA yep. We, uh, questions. We have a ton, a ton of data on that, no doubt. So yeah, and I always share. You know this, Ken. We have, I call them the boot camps at the end, where I share. This is a question you're going to see on your knowledge test. Let's let's not memorize it. Let's understand the why behind it. Uh, but just to prepare them for the knowledge test. You know this though, Ken. I want you to be safe in the real world. My mission isn't just to pass a test. I want you safe when you're out there flying FPV, whatever it is, so you can be uh, a light and be a mentor to everybody else that's out there wondering about what this new drone space is. Even though it's not that new, but to many it is so new. We have to be ambassadors to that. You're a shining star, Jason. A shining oh, star. Awesome.